Welcome to IRG's Sports Medicine Update. I'm Tom Hutler along with Shannon O'Kelly, physical therapist and president of Integrated Rehabilitation Group. And our guest, Dr. Doug Nowak, orthopedic surgeon from Everett Bone and Joint. So Dr. Nowak, give us a basic understanding of the hip joint and how it functions. Well, the hip is a ball and socket joint. Um, the socket's the acetabulum, which is in the pelvis. The ball is the femoral head, which is part of the thigh bone. Um, and then surrounding the socket is the labrum, which is a fibrocartilage or soft tissue bumper that goes circumfer- circumferentially around um, the acetabulum. So we hear about this femoral acetabular impingement syndrome. What is that? So essentially, it is when there's overgrowth of the bone on either the ball side, the femoral head, or the socket side, which is the acetabulum, or most commonly both. And when you go into certain positions, those bones contact each other, and the labrum gets squeezed in between, and eventually could lead to labral tears and arthritis. It sounds painful. What are the symptoms? Uh, Symptoms typically is going to be a pain deep either in the groin or the front of the hip, Um, usually an achiness, sometimes a sharp pain when you do certain maneuvers like a deep squatting or lunging or sometimes sitting on a low seat, getting into or out of a car. Is there certain sports activities or certain populations that are more susceptible to this femoral acetabular impingement? Well, you see it in um, athletes of all different sports. Uh, Hockey definitely comes to mind um, because of the the skating mechanism, it puts you in some high-risk positions that that contact occurs, but really you see it in basketball, football, soccer, um, endurance sports, many, any activity, repetitive movement can result in it. Is there any um, genetics or gender um, uh, susceptibility? Uh, not so much in regards to gender, um, but however, there definitely is a susceptibility in regards to genetics. Some of the bone overgrowth is congenital, although some of it is also related to what sort of activities you've done while you've developed. So if, if I think I have these um, symptoms, which are, again, let's talk about the symptoms. So again, typically it's going to be an achiness deep in the groin or the front of the hip um, and occasionally sharp in certain type of maneuvers. I say rarely you'll get mechanical symptoms. You may get a, a locking, catching, or a popping sensation deep in the hip as well. And how, how is this diagnosed? Physical exam will steer you in the right direction, but ultimately this will require an MRA um, where you inject dye into the hip and do an MRI. And that will then visualize um, the labral tear. In addition, you also get x-rays, which will see the overgrowth of the bone. Interesting. So now we have uh, kind of the signs and symptoms. Um, What are the treatment options? Well, with most orthopedic conditions, I always want to start with a conservative approach. This would include uh, good physical therapy. Activity modification, meaning avoidance of any type of activities that exacerbate the symptoms. Um, anti-inflammatories, potentially steroid injections into the hip. Um, ultimately, if, if those fail, then you can go on to a hip arthroscopy, which is a minimally invasive surgery um, to correct the problems in the hip. Let's talk about the hip arthroscopy because my understanding is that's a fairly new procedure and you have some experience and have trained in hip arthroscopy. Talk about that. Correct. I trained uh, at the Stedman Clinic under doc- Dr. Mark Philippon, who's clearly the pioneer in hip arthroscopy. He's done all the high-level athletes, such as um, Alex Rodriguez, Marlon Mew. I could go on and on. But any professional athlete that has their hip surgery done, 99% of them have had them by Dr. Mark Philippon. This surgery has been done more commonly in the last five to 10 years. It's definitely a, a new area that we're learning more and more about. Um, it's a technically... Uh, difficult surgery to do, which is why there's so few surgeons that do it right now. In the Seattle metro area, to my understanding, there's only three that do a high volume of this, of which I'm included in that group. Um, And we've found that in the short to midterm, hip arthroscopy in the right patients could clearly help your, your function as well as decrease your pain. Interesting. So when you're talking about a hip arthroscopy, which is a fairly, sounds like new technique and it's difficult to do, what's the outcome and what is the response and return to function for these patients that have a hip scope? So when you look at the the studies that have been published, they usually report 80 to 90 percent return to play, return to function of what they had before they were injured. This includes the recreation athlete up to the pro athlete. Some studies in the pro athletes have shown 95 percent return to play. With, With a scope, uh, hip arthroscopy, people can actually return to a fairly high-level function. The goal of the hip arthroscopy, um, and my expectation, is to get you back to the level of play that you were before you were injured and to get rid of your pain. In the setting when someone already has arthritis, you may still have some achiness, but you usually could make it the symptoms much, much better. So here's the deal. I know a lot of people that have hip pain and have maybe early onset arthritis to their hip, and they've been told uh, you don't have enough arthritis to have a hip replacement right now. But now we're talking about a minimally invasive surgery that 
Can it prevent the arthritis or decrease the pain until uh, they can they can have a hip surgery or hip replacement? An early hip arthritis, a hip arthroscopy definitely can be beneficial. Once you have advanced hip arthritis, the bone-on-bone arthritis, a hip arthroscopy usually doesn't help much. Uh, so the, there are I've definitely seen a lot of patients at a hip scope who have been able to put off having a hip replacement for quite a few years. This is a really interesting topic, and it sounds like there's more options for those people that have hip problems, uh, low-level arthritis, or that impingement syndrome. If you'd like more information on this topic, as well as how to contact Dr. Doug Nowak, go to IRGPT.com and click on the Health Media tab, or go to Integrated Rehabilitation Group's Facebook page.